I tried to do my hair myself, so I don't know. But I think everybody's like waiting to get a bit of a haircut. <laughs> now I'm saying, like it's getting a bit deadly. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome audience to the Talking the podcast. I'm your host Majid and today I'm with my co-host brother Rash Assalamu and a very alaykum. special guest brother Zishan aka Smile to Jannah. Assalamu alaikum brothers. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Subhanallah it's a privilege to have you on brother Zishan. It's a privilege to share these next up and coming minutes with you guys talking chatting relaxing maxing <laughs> <laughs> mashallah, mashallah, mashallah. Mashallah. so bro tell us how's the uh, how's the lockdown treating you or shall i say how are you treating the lockdown yes all right isn't it <laughs> <laughs> it depends like you've got two different types of people. you've got introverts and extroverts i'm more of an introvert isn't it so for me it's just uh, <laughs> Uh, any regular holidays frankly <laughs> just chill at home <laughs> more time to myself more time to do what i want so yeah man just just catching on uh, just catching up on a few stuff just refining and just uh, just improving as much as you can you know what i'm saying you know from your point of view brother zishan uh, i don't know how long you've been like um, on the dawa scene or activism scene um, but uh, you know tell us a bit about yourself in regards to when it started, what gave you the idea of the approach that you do have? Because this is definitely an approach which uh, I will, you'd ha- well, your, your likes on, uh, and your followers on, on YouTube, alhamdulillah, testify that it's, it's working. Um, but mm. it's, you know, what, what, how did you arrive at your style where everyone else has a completely different style? Um, how did I arrive to that style? The thing is, when you, when you look at the content that's already there with regards to Islamic content, it's mostly lecture-based. It's mostly kind of scholars talking. They look a certain way. And within, like, I mean, we're, we're Asians here. We know that this whole kind of, when you look a certain way, people label you like a molvi. People label you and kind of put you in a certain category. And that immediately restricts uh, and puts a filter in what you say. Because they're always like, oh, he's a molvi. Number one, he's, he's uneducated. Number two, he might kind of be trying to radicalize us who might be so all of these things kind of all these barriers pop up yeah already well you know we're the 9-11 generation so already people are a bit dubious to this sort of stuff anyway but the thing is it's a, it's a majority of it is a, is a is a political thing whenever you hear obama talking about isis or john kerry talking about isis they hardly ever mention religion or on islamic reformation this is something that's restricted to the to, to the far right but again because we're kind of constantly drip fed mainstream media it does if uh, eventually affect us in some sort of way so so how do you get to these sorts of people well you look at what's what's doing well and what is doing well it's comedy comedy is doing well um that there's there's a very interesting kind of example that people gave was this was a comic relief thing where they went to a village in africa and it was a very remote village and you had all of these people gathered around something. Yeah. So these guys went and they were looking at what they were gathered around and it was a TV. And when they looked at what was being played on the TV that all these village guys were watching, it was Mr. Bean. So it goes to show that comedy transcends barriers, it transcends mm-hmm. cultures. And I think it's, it, there's a saying, they say people don't necessarily remember what you say. They remember how you made them feel when you said it. Okay. So, Alhamdulillah, you know, you've got people that are doing all of this sort of stuff and it's brilliant. Like, scholars are smashing it. But they say the sign of a foolish person is you do the same thing twice and you're expecting different results. Mm. So, when you see people putting videos up and it's not reaching the right people, it's just a similar sit down lecture style, it's clearly not working. So, you need to try something different. Venture out there, look at what other YouTubers are doing, uh, and look at what Muslim YouTubers are doing. And, you know, bro, I saw, I wasn't necessarily happy, like, you know, how they represented the dean, like, using music, I mean, uh, free mixing, doing all of this stuff. Obviously, people view these things in in different ways, but the point that I'm trying to say is, 
what what I kind of wanted wasn't being represented. And mashallah, I used to hear scholars saying, look, you got to be somebody of, of action. Stop just moaning, and groaning. Stop pointing fingers at ulama. Like, you, we are our own people. And look at you guys, mashallah. You have your own vision. You have your own vision. You didn't just sit back and say, well, no one else is showing a holistic view on Islam. So we're just going to sit and we're going to just go and barrage their videos with comments and keep attacking them and disliking their videos. No, you guys, you know, you, you mobilized, you started doing stuff yourself. So that was the thing. I was around scholars, mashallah, very knowledgeable. They would put videos up and just wouldn't reach that many people. So I thought, what if I take that message, make it more digestible, I put out there because with certain scholars that you can't really request them for topics and I was like there's certain things that I've seen that I'd want to get out there that's just that's just what it was just being unhappy with what was there and I was a teacher as well I felt that what, what I would tell my students didn't necessarily hold much weight yeah I wasn't cool enough or I wasn't known enough so I was like what if I could show them that it's this this can be done this can be achieved and then maybe they would respect and maybe they would take on board what I was saying. So there was a number of factors, seeing scholars um, being ineffective online, not being able to get to the youth and just being unhappy with what was out there and eventually just taking it upon myself. I, I don't think I, I'm the most funniest of people. Uh, and possibly you guys aren't the most entertaining of, of podcasters but the point is there will always be someone better there will always be someone worse but do something yeah do take the first step and allah will uh, allah will enhance you and alhamdulillah i've seen this the work that i've done alhamdulillah throughout the years my work has improved my style has evolved it's changed and again you're, you're saying how do i how have have i arrived to this style initially it was comedy but then just morphing because we change over time mm. and i believe i've changed over time as long as you make this an extension of you as you change um your dawah will change and it will morph and people will and you will grow and the people that you're with will grow like certain jokes timing of jokes or you know the quality of the footage lighting so also when you look at the initial videos you're overexposed the camera possibly shaky audio was a bit bad so over time alhamdulillah um that's what it says isn't it take take the first step and then eventually you know things will grow inshallah we can vouch for that to be fair like we've spent weeks doing a video or something sometime and before you know it you put it out there you're thinking yeah this is going to be a wicked video it's a really important message and then you're sitting there waiting for the likes to come in and it's like uh, okay, 200 people have looked, watched it and you, you, sit, you get a bit disheartened sometimes because you think it's an important message but maybe you haven't either packaged that message properly or maybe you're not in front of the right audience properly so it can be disheartening but we've always viewed it as from the point of view of look, um, there's certain messages that need to be out there and you know, there needs to be people talking about it and and i think where the difficulty comes and maybe you can comment on this Zishan, is like and like i know i've watched your podcast that you did with like um feed and stuff and the styles that some podcasts and some stations use is very much a if you jump on kind of an element of pop culture not to say you promote pop culture but something that's trending from a pop culture point of view but then you package your message within that then clearly that seems to ha be more effective than just giving a more of a, maybe a more of a serious view of everything and just expecting people to be as interested in something as you are. Yeah, 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 100%. I mean, for some people, they might be able to pull that off, yeah, if, if mm. they have the numbers. Um, and some people might want to get a certain message across and, you know, you're welcome to do so. But if it doesn't hit the views, as you're growing your channel, maybe a couple of years ahead, you, you possibly re-upload that video. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Or package That's it again. Point. Like um, th there was a, a scholar who he talked about the, the World Cup and he made some brilliant points mm. one year. And uh, it didn't get that many views. So I redid it on my channel with my style. It got more views. Oh, then sure. like a couple of years later, um, when I was doing the impression of Dr. Zakir Naik, I then repackaged that into another style of video and it got more views 
So uh, the point is that it's the, the message is there. The message is Allah is one, and the Prophet is the last messenger. And you know, if you want to attain success, it's you know obeying Allah as shown by the Prophet Yeah, that's that, that's the the bare bones of the message. And how you present that, it's like you're saying it just seems like a no-brainer to me. If something's popping off, um, why not? jump on the bandwagon because mm. these guys invest millions into mm. PR and marketing. Mm. We invest our Sunday afternoon. Yeah. So <laughs> there's a big discrepancy there. You know what I'm saying? Millions on the one hand and Sunday afternoon with your daughter dangling off your bed is not a, a valid comparison. Mm. So in that sense, if you know something is trending, and you're able to bring something in. For example, I remember back in the days, there was this big thing about Sonu Nigam, who's an uh, Indian yeah. singer. He made some comments about, about the Adhan. Adhan, yeah, 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 yeah. That it was annoying to him or something like that. Yeah, so, yeah, so he made some not, not very nice comments about the Adhan disturbing him. And if, if I was to make a video generally on the sanctity and the miraculous nature of the Adhan, no one's going to watch it. To be honest, if I saw that in a title, I wouldn't watch it. Like, it's dead. Yeah, it's not relevant to me. Yeah, I heard the Adhan, I go to the mosque, or I heard the Adhan, or I pray at home, or, or whatever. Like, that's it. But now, because it's now associated with controversy, in that video, I can bury just an amazing articulation of Adhan and that would reach, say, 70,000, 80,000, where possibly it could have reached 20,000. You know what I'm saying? So it's just being clever about these things. And that's what we need to do. And I like I like what you said, bro, which was um you upload something and if it doesn't do well, you're like, okay, why didn't why didn't it do well? And that's a very healthy way of thinking. Because some people say, Well, I've just put a message out there. I don't have to do anything. Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. Even if one person benefits. And look, that's good. It sounds nice, but but that's like let's let's be a bit more yeah. motivated. You know, you have saying? to be a bit objective orientated, isn't it? If you're not objective orientated, you can you can carry on in life and you just you don't achieve anything. You got to be driven. You know, what I'm saying mm. like you got to be self-critical sometimes. That mm. criticizes or criticize your work. You see a comment and it's drilling you. Say so what caused a person to say that? If the person is just calling you big ears and saying, "Oh, you're ugly," that's not something you can change. Yeah, because mm. that's what, how you're made. But if somebody says, oh, the lighting's crap or, or you took so long to get into it, I clicked off the video. That's, that's a valid point. Yeah, yeah, he's being a bit rude, but say, are you using the lighting? No, you're not. Mm. Yeah. The, how, how many minutes did, did it take for you to get into the video? It took four or five minutes. What's the retention time? In mm. first 30 seconds. So you need to get people's attention in the first 30 seconds. That's a valid point. Yeah, him calling you big ears or big nose, like you can't change that. You know what I'm mm. saying? So that's just an insult. Whilst the other one is advice buried in a bit of rudeness. thing as well is, you know, in, in other aspects of life, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, job interviews or, you know, whether it's your studies or stuff like, you know, we would exercise these type of methods. You know, I would try, you know, we'll do this, we'll do that, this style, which works, which doesn't work. And like you said, and to be honest with you, it's, it, it's good that you guys made that point before I said it because I would I was going to say that look subhanallah if one person benefits I'm happy with that <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's good that you guys mentioned it first but you're right in in the fact that it, you know if you look at the life of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know he adopted the best styles at that time that you know that he could have used so for example when he went up the mountain to call the people this was a style because he knows he's going to get up there and this was a method of you know, when there was some important news for the Arabs, they would go up the mountain and, you know, and when you call out, everyone would say, actually, you know what, this is... Even, even the fact that he would go to the influential leaders, mm. subhanAllah, that okay. in itself, bro, like, it's, it's all well and good me saying, oh, depression sucks, depression's bad, but de de depression cannot be solved by having material possessions. I've got a beard. Yeah, I've got like an average job that is just, you know, it, it works for me. Alhamdulillah. But if it comes from me, like it holds no weight. So when, when I uploaded the video where it's Kendrick Lamar, Lady Gaga, yeah, you've got these sorts of celebrities 
um, mentioning how depression has affected them despite having money, it holds mm. more weight because whether mm. we like it or not, like people say, oh, why have you uploaded this video? You're promoting such and such. Excuse okay. me, my video is going to reach 30,000, 50,000, max 100,000. Yeah. But these guys in that same space of time, they're going to reach at least 2 million. Mm. Same space of time. So how on earth am I promoting them? They mm. already promoted. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So our youth watch them. Like how deluded do we have to be to assume that an Islamic video is now going to promote M&M? Uh, give me a break. I'm not, I'm not even going to entertain that thought because mm. it's just ludicrous. Yeah, the exposure that guy has is on another level. Yeah. So when I kind of put that and, and bounce off that, it's, I'm not giving him exposure. He has the exposure. I'm now redirecting people that where they would go and listen to his track and just kind of go with the flow. Now they would think now there's something that's associated with him. Yeah. It's funny because, now, sorry, go on. Sorry. Now I'll let you finish. No, no, go on, go on. Go on. No, I was just saying, it's funny because people gave that comment that oh, because you mentioned Eminem, as if that's going to make them go and listen to Eminem all of a sudden, all of this, all the time. Or it's like they assume that just because of mentioning or just showing something, um, like you would, if you're speaking to your children, to tell them that these things exist out in society is better to tell them about it than completely shelter them because they're going to see it anyway. If you tell them that it's out there and then protect them from it, don't sit there. You know, it's not like you're sitting there watching it with them. You're just telling them, look, look this stuff is the thing out is, there. Though, it's, mm. it's kind of true. Like when you mention something, it will it immediately. Like if I say pink elephant, immediately what you've done now is visualize. Yeah, you, you visualize it. So if you're talking about something, naturally people are going to be thinking about it. But what does that mean now that I, I can't talk about this, this thing that's gone racism because you're going to start thinking, you're going to start calling people the N word and the P word, or I can't talk about pedophilia. And now you're going to start, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, doing some dodgy stuff. Or if I mention about the harms of pornography, you're going to start, you know, whipping out certain websites. That's ludicrous. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Because yeah, yeah. you've got idiots everywhere. And I'm sorry, but if you're such an idiot that you look at a title and you start Googling it, maybe <laughs> no one can help you. Me, I'm, I'm sure cannot help you, mate. You now I'm saying, no, to like, be fair, you're on another flex. Even we've had that challenge in the past because, like, you know, I don't know what it is really. You, you sit down, you think the, the title is just going to be uh, something exposed or like this political event has happened. And you look at the title and you think, okay, that explains exactly what this video is about. But actually, you then think about it. People aren't searching for that. That's not the title they're going to be searching for. They're going to be searching for things that, you know, are trending, that they want to hear about, and not just a boring, oh, this is what is happening in this country and, you know, in the world. So it is another way of looking at it. The thing is, what you need to do is you need to evaluate the market. And that's the reality of it. You understand? At the end of the day, right now, the the message that the main message is certainly for for the youth, because at the end of the day, they're the new gen, they're the next generation. And right now, to be honest with you, the, the, the challenges that the youth are, are facing are going to face, you know, are unprecedented in, in what we experienced. I mean, when I was growing up, you know, at the end of the day, there was a bit of racism and stuff like that. But, you know, there wasn't this level of attack on Islam as such. But, you know, and all this aggressive liberalism and stuff, like that, they're going to come across these ideas now, you know, at, at a next scale. Now, the thing is, though, is that you need to be thinking about who your message is packaged for, Right. And if you and if you look at nowadays the people you got to, and you do a bit of analysis you'll see that you know there's like brother Zisha mentioned there's retention right retention span how how you know nowadays people don't want to read things people don't read long articles they want to be entertained very quickly you know what is the messages out there and the thing is you could be saying the right thing but if you're not packaging it in a way where anyone's going to listen to it you could be doing that for tens of tens of years you know mm. and it's not even a case of you saying well. I didn't become famous. The issue is not fame. The point is, is that you got a message, but the message is only as good as people receiving it, right? So at mm. the end of the day, I, you know, hats off that the the approach that Brother Zisha takes, and we've tried to do it ourselves. We, you know, we've sat down and thought, actually, you know, should we do something a bit more trending? And that's why you see, okay, maybe a bit more on a political level, but you see that a lot of the topics we tend to do are things that people are speaking about, people are talking about that are, that are relevant. Why? Because People want to know about these things. Thing is, bro, um, if, if you're if you got a podcast, yeah, 
like the first thing you need to do is you need to be aware of the market. Mm. Yeah, you look at the top five podcasts and you see what are they doing. Okay, Joe, Joe Rogan's up there. Okay, w- what does he do? Okay, he's got certain types of guests. He talks about certain controversial things. Um, okay, um, that's number one. Number two, he's got Joe Rogan short clip. So he's made, made these uh, short uh, clips. Okay, he's on a, a few platforms. Okay, he's doing this, he's doing that. Now, if a person's not doing that, and then you're expecting things. It's like me. If I'm on YouTube and I don't know the, the KSIs and the, the Logan Pauls and the KC Neistats, it doesn't make sense. Or because I'm doing political commentary, if I don't know about Trevor Noah and uh, I don't know about Late Night with, um, what's his name, that British guy with that. Uh, Oliver actor. Summer. Oliver Summer. <laughs> yeah, 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 the Oliver guy. So if I don't know these guys, I'm sorry, I, I can't expect um, results. It yeah, doesn't make good, sense. Yeah, that's good approach. Because what you do is you look at the best, and then that's what you work with. I mean, mm. why why would you look at someone that's fourth or fifth? It doesn't make any sense. Look at the best and see what's working for them, and then build off that. You know what I'm saying? Because now, all you just need is like two three bits of equipment, and you're in the game. Now you need to look. Okay, is it is it the personality? Is it how we're coming across? Are people very excited, uh, energetic? Is there kind of like uh, multiple cameras? Like, what are we working with here? And that's what you need to do. Like, I ask my students, I'm like, well, what are you listening to? Mm. So we don't listen to music. I'm like, let's cut the crap in it. <laughs> like, we know you do. Yeah, I know you do. I'm asking who. I'm not asking if you listen to music. I'm saying, who do you listen to? Then they tell me. And I know. So I know now, hey, like, it's South London. I know the big trend is drill music. Yes, okay. that's a big thing. Yeah. Now, uh, but on a, on a kind of YouTube level, the uh, the general youth they're still into their kind of Drake and their Eminem and these sorts of artists. They they're still there. Um, however, the likes of the Jay Zs and the Kanyes they're going a bit down. Yeah, they're mostly in investment and they're mostly in business and they've got like a brand like Kanye and his Yeezys just crossed a million. Yeah, uh, just now officially a billionaire. So in, in that sort of stuff, you, you need to know what's going on. Like now, um, I, I, I can upload a video on Ramadan. Mm. Are you, are you going to watch it, bro? If I title it Ramadan. Ramadan. Your followers might watch it, but you, you definitely don't want to attract anyone new, I don't think. You know what I'm saying? Now, if I say um, French Montana drinking alcohol and fasting. Yeah, definitely, man. Boom. That's going to get bare views. You know what I'm saying? So that is just an exclusive, isn't it? Like that's... <laughs> well, is, that true that anyway? <laughs> is that true anyway? Or is that like you just made that up? No, no, no. That's, that's going to be, inshallah, my next video. Okay, subhanAllah. Yes. You're you know what I'm saying? Man, like... Know? I looked, uh, I unearthed, it, it was his interview last year on Sway, where he, they asked him about ISIS and they asked him about fasting. Um, and then there was this conversation about drinking alcohol and women and that. And now this year, the, the same thing. Um, but I was, I was looking, he's got this big chain. So, mm. And it's Allah on it. So he's shirtless and he's got an Allah chain and stuff like this. It's interesting. You can bring up certain things. And the, the key message here is, the youth, when they do these wrong things, sometimes they feel they can't come back to the deen. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. SubhanAllah. That, that's my kind of thing here. That Look, you've got someone like French. Um, despite him doing whatever, he drinks, he womanizes, all that. But yet the deen is still accessible. I'm not saying treat the deen as a joke. Mm. But what I'm saying is the deen is accessible. Yeah, And Allah is willing to forgive you as long as you are sincere. Yeah, That's, that's the first thing. And second thing is, why is someone like French? Why? He's got women. He, he, mm. Like he's, he's sitting on the, on, the, on the right side, he's got Rick Ross. On the left side, he's got P. Diddy. He's releasing a track with DJ Khaled. And then he's releasing a track with Drake. Why? He's got chains. He's, he's in his mansion. He's got flipping as much Ciroc vodka as he wants. Like, why on earth is this guy fasting? Mm. Doesn't, that, doesn't that raise a question? And the yes. thing is now, the kids do think because it's not flipping Beatty McBeatty making this point. It's French, yeah, and it's me talking about French. I'm not, ju- and I'm not judging them. Like if the youth 
are scared. You know what? They're not scared. It's just that they're in a lifestyle that they've got, that they've been put in since day one. Parents haven't been home. They've been raised by the media. They've been raised by the state school system yes. and, you know, pumped with music and this lifestyle. That's how they figured out how to survive. And now it becomes a haram. Kufr, shirk, bidah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It doesn't work. No. Yeah, show that there's an understanding and give them a way out. Yeah, eventually these kids will come back on Dean because the mm. gangster lifestyle starts wearing thin when you start passing the age of 18. It doesn't work. You can't go to the job interview like, yeah, wagwan. Yeah, give me the job in it, fam. Yeah, where the where yo pass that zoo in it. It doesn't work like that. When you're 18 and you're going to a job interview and your mom is literally surviving hand to feet, it just doesn't mm. work. And you go out and, you know, you're trying to sell dope, but there's other, there's other people and you genu- you genuinely fearing for your life that if you go into a certain territory, you're not going to make it home. Mm. They're going to come to your home. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, it gets yeah. messy. So in that sense, you, you have to kind of empathize with them, empathize with them and then, you know, speak their language. Like people say, oh, the youth this and we have like 25, 30 minute, 45 minute conversations and how do we get the youth to the masjid and flipping the imam doesn't even speak english yeah why don't we yeah. why don't we start there yeah get an imam who can speak the damn language <laughs> and then flip and try to get the youth in like why is this disingenuous oh how do we get the youth in like yeah. like these guys like uh, oh how do we get rid of isis oh we need more schools like the mi6 alistair cook he's saying he's quoting and he's saying the pakistani minister saying this but no, these, these agencies or these groups are state-sponsored, intelligence-sponsored. So that's the first thing. Like, how do we stop that? Get it from the root. Don't mm. just, you've got a pile of poo on the floor and you're trying to, you know, spray it with utter and, you know, <laughs> you air freshener and fairy liquid. It's still poo. It's yeah. still beep at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? It's a pile of beep. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's be frank. This is what we're doing. Like the, the kids at home, they've been mums in the kitchen all day, dad's doing cabbing. Mm. Like the, the child's like on WhatsApp, he's watching 50 Cent and watching this drill music. And uh, that's, that's that'd be it. And now suddenly you're telling him, come to the masjid and listen to a one hour lecture on the day of judgment. Give me a break. Yeah, these, these, these are the challenges, isn't it? Zishan, would you say most of your audience are those people who are, you know, distracted in that way or, you know, you're trying to get them? taking those first initial steps or do you have would you say you you know we watch your videos and we enjoy them and but at the same time um if your audience is also those people that you can break away from that you know western culture that is kind of a very negative influence on them Mm. equally i think that side of it is important sometimes what people do and you know i think we may have all been guilty of this at some point or the other is you think that your message for your audience is the most important but for instance if our message which is to maybe more active in the dawa type individuals if it's for more practicing muslims to get them to i don't know help revive the ummah to get the ummah to where she wants to be but if we at the same time people are neglecting the next younger generation who are being corrupted by these societies, whose message is actually more important? Not saying either should be more important, but surely they're both needed. 100%, 100% bro. And you've knocked this on the head because this was the son of the Sahaba and they, they would never tread on each other's feet. Khalid bin Walid, uh, radiallahu an, he, was, he was a warrior. Yeah? Abu Huraira, radiallahu an, he was a muhaddith. Yeah, he would compile hadith. Khalid bin Walid would fight. Abdullah bin Masood, radiallahu an, he was a faqih. Yeah, Mu'adh ibn Jabal was a master of halal and haram. Hudayfa was the secret keeper of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yeah, so you had different companions who were good at different things. Yeah, Ibn Abbas was good for tafsir. So you had all, you never had somebody saying, oh, why are you doing tafsir? Or you mm-hmm. should be doing this. Or why are you doing hadith? You should be doing this. So, it, as long as, and this is the thing that I've noticed, even with, with sex and stuff, alhamdulillah, there's something good with every kind of way of thinking. And as long as a person takes the good and leaves the bad, you can benefit. And 
and I guess that's the theme of your podcast as well, how you're not trying to restrict on one thing and you shouldn't. Why mm. why bottleneck yourself? Why pigeonhole yourself when you could do anything? Like I was unemployed for two years. Uh, a brother was helping me with CVs and stuff. I made a video on that. There were times that were, uh, and there are times that are very difficult in my life and, you know, a person feels very close and uh, and symptomatic of depression and that is something you, you, you now do. Yes, you you have a certain approach and yes, my, my thing is I'd rather appeal to the non-practicing folk because I feel they need it the most whilst mm. there are people who are now uh, appealing to the practicing folk. Mm. Both are equally valid. Mm. However, I... I I'm more inclined towards a non-practicing folk because according to me, I think they need more help. Yeah. Because they're in more danger nowadays. Yeah. Somebody may disagree and they would be right. It depends what you're bringing to the table. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a matter of usul, the principle. Yeah. So they may have a different usul and it's going to be right. And it's, you know, based upon the Quran. And Bro, I, I don't think one can, to be honest with you, one can disagree with that. Um, the, the fact that there's people out there who uh, we can easily be judgmental about, you know, people out there who are not sort of practicing, who are, you know, their iman is at risk. You know, at the end of the day, these people cannot be ignored. And, and in reality is, is, you know, I don't know whether you guys would agree or not. You know, it would seem that um, they are in the majority right now. Um, I mean, so from you, from your experience, brother Zishan, um, you know, obviously, because you're in you're in contact with a lot of the youth and your teacher yourself. I'm not sure what you're teaching, but uh, you know, what's your what's your view in, re in regards to you know, are are the youth coming closer to Islam? You know, uh, are, you know, are we getting that? Because thing is, is me and Rash, for example, the sort of people we may be in contact with, uh, you do you almost get a sense that you know, certainly there's a revival, certainly people are getting close to Allah, but that can just be your you're like Rash always says, your echo chamber. But the thing is, though, is, you know, from your experience, because your market is slightly different, um, what, what's, what's, your, what's your gauge on that? Do you think people, do you think the youth, I'm, I'm specifically talking about the youth, do you think they're coming more towards Islam or do you think that the challenges and the, the distractions in this society now are at such a scale that, you know, it's, it's, that, that itself is becoming a challenge? The thing is that the, the dunya is becoming more and more attractive yeah, exactly. yeah. Media. like um our 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 senses are being just overwhelmed yeah, but like now with netflix it's like dave Chappelle said he said no sorry it wasn't dave Chappelle. it was uh, russell howard i think russell howard or dave Chappelle. yeah i think it was russell howard he said these kids can go home and watch any movie ever made Mad. That's, that, 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 that's a big thing even with pornography like with with us, it would be, you know, in, in such a way you'd have to go to the, you know, news agent. It'd be on the top shelf and there'd be ways and strategies that people had refined over time. Uh, <laughs> but now, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, but gee. now it's, it's totally different. Like you go, you click. In fact, you don't even need to click. You go on one of these uh, watch free movies online thing mm. and then a pop-up comes up and it's there. You know what I'm saying? And the, the devices are in the, the, the kids' room. So mm. the kid looks around, there's no one there, and you are intrigued. Yeah. Yeah? You see a woman that, that's had her features enhanced. Mm. Yeah. She, she's now, she looks, her skin looks the most smoothest, her mm. features look chiseled, and, and just the, the, the appealing kind of um, way. So, how is that not going to appeal to you? SubhanAllah, exactly, man. And you go out now in the summer, and this is going to happen now in this bank holiday weekend. You go out, you got little seven year old girls with shorts up to hair yeah, yeah, with yeah, their yeah. fathers. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's standard, it's casual. Really? You look Instagram models, the TikTok, it's, it's everywhere. Mm. You, your senses become overwhelmed. You that's, that's the first thing. Second thing, YouTube itself promotes these big artists mm. and the, the kind of money that gets put in these music videos it's ridiculous like this was about a year ago i don't know if how close they are i think look, they were trying to make lord of the rings tv series yeah, yeah. and lord the budget okay. for that is a billion dollars mm -hmm. whoa 
because it's all about series now it's you know movie and movies and stuff like that okay they still make them but a lot of the budget has flipped across from movies to series and people and it's something i mentioned to madge quite often this whole world of escapism is so huge now from computer gaming and netflix and series that that's what frightens me sometimes about how that could consume or well, it is not could it's consuming it's certainly consuming the western world but that's having a massive impact on muslims i i don't watch tv series yeah i watched a couple and as as men like that's why they say that men like video games and completing video games because mm. we we like to kind of complete things yeah we're very hands on people yeah mm. it's psychologically proven so when, for example, I, I'm watching a series, yeah, I watch an episode, 45 minutes, half an hour, and it ends on a cliffhanger. Always. Intentionally. I'm sorry, but I'm going to click on episode two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now. Yeah. I'm not waiting. If it's been released in bulk, I'm yeah, going to yeah. binge. And yeah, Zishan, yeah. They, they, it, you don't need, even need to click. It just goes you get a little progress bar going, I'm going to click into episode two for you in like three seconds and you don't even have a chance to you have to actually make an effort to get to the remote control and go oh stop i don't want to watch Man. the next episode it's mad. that's so true that's so true bro and the thing is with movies like anytime i want to watch something i'll watch a movie yeah because one and a half hours they are now in a time limit they have to entertain me in one and a half hours and they have to give me the full story but in a tv series it's stretched yeah like people are you know banging about certain shows but I'm not going to mention them, but the, the point is that it's just so much investment, so much mm. time goes and you're in this make-believe virtual reality and it's more time for your, because your brain is in alpha state, your mm. defenses are down, these messages are going, are going straight to your subconscious. Here, where all three of us are in beta, you say something, I say something, yeah, that's when your brain waves are in beta. But however, if um, you guys were just flat out just speaking to me and I couldn't interact. My brain would be in alpha. It would be going to my subconscious. So there's, there's brain mm. psychology behind it. Uh -huh. and it does, it does affect us. Yeah. When you're sitting with your defenses down constantly at the mercy, like people, I remember when this, um, this antichrist thing, Messiah, uh, that, those Messiah, the John, Messiah, so, yeah. that came out. Like Yasmin Mujahid did a very good analysis and she was kind of breaking down how they were uh, showing Muslims and how they were showing different nations. But, and, and even just the way that the Antichrist looked, a very handsome, appealing Middle Eastern man. You know what I'm saying? Like these small things. Like otherwise before that, the Jal looks like this crooked guy with these wonky teeth and one eye and really mashed up skin. You see yeah. him and you're like, ah, now when you think you're that, that image has now been contaminated in a good way. You know, the point Allah. about that, those movies and stuff that they're promoting, um, what was it in the media recently about um, normalizing ties with Israel in some of those... Saudi. Um, in Saudi. Again, you can see that they'll latch onto it because they have an agenda. They have, they're trying to genuinely normalize ties with Israel and they have been doing for a while, but now they recognize this is a way for us to promote this message to the masses and the masses are into series and movies and these kind of things. So why not use that mechanism? And, and the likes of America and the USSR and stuff, they've been doing that for decades, if not longer, you know, about if you promote certain things in, in kind of in movies and, and that kind of culture, then people may, and I never looked at it from the alpha and beta kind of point of view, but it does, it goes into your subconscious and you do start to think naturally, oh, they're the good guys, they're the bad guys. And it's, it, it's, a, it's a proven style and, and they continue to. Bro, continue with the to propaganda, I, I grew up with the, when the Cold War was, was, was going on. That does maybe sound quite old, but that is the case, right? And I remember at that time you had Rocky, you had Rambo, you know, even the mm. Afghans were good at that time, right? But then what you see is since then, there's been a shift now where, for example, it's all about Muslims. You know, all these programs they do, it's about the Muslims. And even Brother Zishan will, will know the score this as well because, you know, he's covered quite, made quite a few videos recently about what's happening in India, which is a, a serious situation. But if you look at Bollywood, Bollywood right now, you know, you see their movies are all... Uh, 
against Muslims uh, before it may have been even against Pakistan. But now, if you think about some of the movies they're making historically, where movies, yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly, where basically they're showing as Muslims forget Pakistan, but Muslims as Muslims were invaders. Okay, forget the fact that they've been there for so many centuries. So, and and what's happening is, you know, via the mainstream, you know, people are taking these ideas in, and Subhanallah, you know. And, and the reality is, though, is going back to Brother Zishan's point at the beginning, and it's really important that, you know, they have million, millions of dollars or whatever, that's their budget, okay? Maybe Brother Zishan has, has, has a, a Sunday afternoon and, and like us, right? So the reality is that if there's, so, if there's such a big disparity anyway, if we don't do the best we can in what we can, then we must give up. You, you, know, you know what I mean? And I think that's yeah. something really important because... If you think about the youth now, like you were mentioning, Brash, about the, uh, the the Netflix generation and stuff like that, it's so easy for them to, you know, like normally we talk about uh, this is taking them away from worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? As in time wise, when are they going to be learning the deen? When are they going to be taking the dawah, etc.? But that's one side. But the other side is that what Brother uh, Zisha was mentioning about the, the, the alpha stuff, right? Is the fact that what about the ideas that they're taking on board? Mm. How are we going to undo those ideas? Definitely. And this is, I speak to my children about this sometimes as well. And this whole idea that all of a sudden um, you're watching something and you think it's innocent. You think, oh, I'm watching a program. Okay. And they know, you know, there'll be certain ideas of the programs getting out. And I'll say to my daughters that, you know, you do realize that's, that's incorrect. And they'll go, yeah, I know you've told us, but you know, how often can you supervise and how often can you go to undo some of the, the negative that these programs and this media is constantly pumping in one little side thing. Like yesterday, I was just after um, iftar, I was flicking through and very very old movie and again it's probably from our time match um surely there's a movie called air force one and i was just flicking through and i saw a scene and it made me think immediately that when i watched it probably 20 i don't know 10 15 years ago probably wouldn't have even twigged so what was happening was there was the uh, hijacker on the plane and and he said in a comment even though like obviously the movie star is the somehow the president is going to save the air force one and save the world and america's like the greatest and all of this hmm. the funny thing well not funny what was said is um in a moment he goes oh we can't kill the 50 people in this plane you, you know you're playing with 50 people's lives the, the president is saying this and then the, the russian guy goes well you guys killed a hundred thousand people in iraq for one penny of reducing of um, price of oil he said it just like that and and all of but i probably would have never noticed that that was said but those are those are true things that these you know western countries and these colonialists have done yet the 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 movie will be portrayed as if oh okay those are the bad guys so what they say has no value and credibility these are mm -hmm. the good guys and oh look at the way they're emotional they're crying and all of these kinds of mm -hmm. therefore feel sorry for them, not for the one that's just mentioned that 100,000 people have died in a, in a Muslim country. So I thought that was quite interesting. It just goes to prove how easy it is to, you know, get into people's psyche. Yeah, 100 percent. 100 It depends how you, how you frame things, isn't it? Whoever's in power, they get to control history, they get to control the media, and whoever controls the media controls the masses. That's what it is at the end of the day. Mm. Yeah, what do you so, think is it is it going to be different because one thing a way i've looked at it is you know we're not going to keep our children away from social media that's you know because part of it sometimes is like there's so much can be so much bad on being online yeah, and I, th I think i know what you're saying you're saying you can't tell them to stay away from it because it's there so what do we do that's mm. that's actually a very good point and it does get brought up a lot and it's it's preparing them with the filters in mind like now you notice that scene in Air Force One or that, that quote because you're a bit more politically aware. Mm. You're, that, that's, that's what you're looking for. If, for example, you're now going to buy a blue car, yeah, on the way to the showroom, the cars that are going to seem um, the most common to you are blue cars because you're, you're actively looking for them. Mm. Yeah, so, and if you look for the negative in something, yeah, you go through, like if you're an Islamophobe and looking through the Quran, you're looking for negative stuff, you're going to find it. However, if you're looking for good stuff, you're going to find it. Even in yourself, if you're looking for bad things 
or bad occasions or things where things have gone wrong, you will find it. Mm. Yeah. So it, it, it depends. So that's how we need to equip our children. Like these sorts of things are now there. You equip them to, to know these things. That's why I like it in, in schools when they kind of teach persuasive language and media techniques and stuff, which ironically they teach, but um, the, the very system that we're in contradicts it and misuses it. But the fact that I think being aware of lo <clears throat> logical fallacies, that's very important. Yeah, knowing what renders an argument illogical. Mm. For example, when we give an argument for the um, authenticity of Islam and they say, oh, your prophet was X, Y, Z. People mm. should know. That's mm. an illogical response. It's called ad hominem, which means rather than targeting the uh, argument at hand, you are disparaging the person um, that's, that's making the point. So, mm. for example, you could say, bro, um, why aren't you wearing your hat? You normally wear your hat. I say, shut up. You're scared of spiders. Yeah. And you're ugly. And, yeah? and that happens on social media so often. Bro, it doesn't happen on social. Bro, it happens on the political sphere. When we ask them questions pertaining to, you know, religion and, and stuff like this, they just red herring. Mm. Like you, you say, bro, why did you join this podcast 15 minutes late? And I say, bro, why aren't you fasting today? <laughs> That's got nothing to do with what do you asked. It. It's a red herring. It's yeah, a yeah. totally different um, argument. Yeah? yeah. So logical fallacies helping and equipping our children to see through the nonsense and the garbage. Yeah, yeah that's, like that's that. the first thing. I like Seeing that. through it. Yeah, equipping them. Number two, changing the narrative. For example, I've I done a couple of videos on Ronaldo. Somebody's saying, oh, bro, why are you talking about Ronaldo? Da, da, da. Bro, Ronaldo, number one, doesn't have tattoos. Yeah, he doesn't yeah, have tattoos. True, true. Yeah, yeah. Because he wants to give blood. And if you've got tattoos, you can't give blood. Number two, he doesn't drink alcohol because his father... Um, died of uh, alcohol abuse and so on and th there were certain issues number three he's publicly supported um, causes that and other celebrities and stuff. dubious yeah some of the more established ones are syria and uh, palestine, palestine palestine yeah palestine i don't know if palestine's established um, oh, okay yeah i've seen it on russia today but um, i don't know it is possible people do mention that he gave his golden boot or whatnot but allah knows best but I do know he's in a video talking about Syria. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that was well known. Yeah. Out kid and possibly, I think, even uh, the Rohingya as well. Um, so so these, these are established. Hmm. Um, and these sorts of things makes him look different. And the fact that he's a very family-orientated person, lives with his kids, um, and he's, he's very hardworking. Like people see Messi is a natural footballer, but Ronaldo, on the other hand, he worked for it, yeah, and that and that's what he does. So mm -hmm. it's it's how you then package these people. That, okay, you've got P D D and these guys, but did you know? Like a couple of years ago, he tried fasting as well, yeah, with French Montana, and it shows that French Montana was able to influence his friends. There's another clip with French Montana, even with Vin Diesel, and Vin Diesel said he wanted to try fasting as well. So again, you use these things and you bring your kids up practically mm. yeah practically saying you know what and challenge them get them to think critically and outside the box okay we've seen this mm. or what do you think what do mm. you think uh, skipped your vision what mm. do you think they, they were trying to teach you when they constantly know that every type of media has a bias has a message they're trying to get across and you're constantly um, training that muscle in the child's mind eventually they will we I mean, you can train your bicep and eventually it will become very powerful. You can train other, you can train negativity in your mind and eventually you'll be the most negative person in your, in your street. You can train, you know, these sorts of things as well. Um, and if you do that, that I feel is more practical. And of course, investing in our media. Mm. Um, uh, and I am an advocate of, of reducing technology. Um, and in, ho in the home, you mean? Pardon? You mean in the home? Um, in the home, yeah. And even like uh, controlling it with the kids as much as possible. Okay. For example, if you allow social media with your child when he's at the age of 10, um, and then another parent allows that at the age of 15, 
the effects are going to be very and incredibly uh, different. For mm-hmm. example, a child that gets hooked on dopamine from a small age, their reaction and their mentality is different. And it's, it's proven that social media gives people dopamine releases. And whilst you've got other drugs that are regulated and you, you are allowed to have them at the age of 18, why is it that social media doesn't have an age? Mm. Yeah? Children are being hooked. Yeah? The brain psychology is being morphed and they're being hooked to likes um, and then yeah, suddenly yeah, yeah. We're, yeah, we're saying, oh, no, bas karne hai. Oh, we, we have to, oh, mm. everybody else is doing it. Shut up, but everyone else is doing it. That's why I released that video where, mm. you know, you've got that guy, Aquaman. Aquaman, the, the super, superhero. Yeah, you know, Jason Momoa who plays. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He says he doesn't have a TV, doesn't have a phone. So In fact, the last time he played a video game was past the age of 40. Yeah, mm. you've got um, other... Well, what about like Steve Jobs? Didn't he, Steve Jobs, say that even though inventing of the iPad and the iPhone and stuff, his children weren't even allowed to have te- um, devices yeah, at home? I don't know. Can anybody that. clarify that? But I'm, I'm sure I read that. I, I wouldn't be surprised, to be honest. A, mm. a 10 year old cannot understand the true benefits and harms of something as opposed to, say, a 15, 16, 17 year old. Yes, the 15, 16, 17 year old will have trials. But you cannot compare that to a 10-year-old. You're getting somebody hooked to something from a small age. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah? If a person says, oh, we can't control our kids. No, that's you being a lousy parent. Because oh, you have celebrities. I'm telling you people. that I'm, I actually did a video on it. You've got even the, the woman, Kira Knightley, who's in Pirates yeah. of the Caribbean. With Jason Momoa, you got Eminem who said, "I don't even have a computer. I'm not computer literate because I'd just be looking at comments all day." You had the Divergent star saying she would rather communicate face to face than to have a phone. So you got all of these stars saying very similar things. Why? But they're entertaining us, though. Mm. That's because doing something and being at the mercy of something is two different things. Yeah, and I think we just need to get real. Uh, and sometimes we, we're just deluded. And I think as parents, we, we, we buy the child the phone and then we complain he's on the phone. I'm sorry, that's just stupid reasoning. Yeah. It's just preposterous. Mm-hmm. Where I, did the child get the money for the phone? Oh, I bought it. <laughs> Where, where's the Wi-Fi coming from? Oh, I have it. Okay. What's, what's, what's your thing? What's your policy with the phone? Oh, he's always got the phone on the dinner table. He's always got the phone. Well, have a policy that you don't mm. have it on the. Well, uh, well the funny thing is, if you can't f- control your kid, if you can't control your kids, and you're supposed to be the parent, then how are you going to ever be able to influence? But ten-year-old is controlling a thirty-year-old. I'm sorry, mate. You, you, you're, Bro, you're, you, you're saying ten your crown jewels should be tied up, mate. You should not be allowed <laughs> to reproduce. But it's younger than ten. It's younger than ten. But the thing is, is you know, in the old times, it was. You know, it was just easy, isn't it? It's like, what do they call it? I think there's a term for it where, you know, if, if uh, rather than giving the, the time to the kids, because generally parents may be busy, for example, what they would do is they'd just put the TV on for them. Uh, but, you know, I think Brother Zishan, the point he makes is, is valid, the fact that, you know, there's two points. One is that, you know, we need to be able to give them those filters. You know, if you give them the... Is, so, for example, at home, if you... Can give them the prevention is, that, is better than cure, isn't it? Prevention, it's, 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 that, exactly, definitely. exactly. So definitely. you know, if you, if you give them just say information about Islam from a point of you know gender and stuff like this. So when they go to the schools and they go to science and stuff like that, and they you know, and when they're being told, when they're being asked, you know, who do you really feel from in from the inside, you know, they'll be able to tackle it. I think that's something which is really important because even someone may have the approach of just take them out of that, take them out of that uh, environment. But the reality is, is that at some stage, the, the children, whether they, when they're younger or when they're older, they're going to have to enter the society at some point anyway. If you haven't... Uh, bro, uh, let me give them, you an example, yeah? I'm going to put you on the spot, yeah, Majid, yeah? Oh, no, uh, bro, man. What, what, what's the biggest social media platform out there? Uh, YouTube. Uh, Rash? Oh, actually, yeah, actually, I'd let me... Just, Facebook. No, it's, it's TikTok. There you go, match. It's TikTok. It's TikTok. Yeah, it's TikTok, yeah, yeah. Wow. It's, uh, Google. I think no, YouTube is, uh, I think, is the most as a search engine. There you go. Now the reason that's why, why we got important. you on the you're the experts. So that's why we got you on, isn't it? 
no 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 it's not even that bro there's 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 been enough coverage yeah. on on mm. tiktok especially yeah. with this whole china thing you're right um and, and they're trying to really push how tiktok is blah spying on you it's a chinese thing and blah 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 it's there's been enough coverage to suggest that tiktok is just killing it yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. now when when parents come up to me and they complain oh my child's on the thing and uh, the, what, what parents do is they arm their child with the phone without understanding how it works Absolutely. and then they're trying to wean them off it Mm. it's that whole prevention is better than cure understand the device if they're going on tiktok you need to know as a parent tiktok you need to know if your child's going on facebook you need to know like tiktok what makes it more successful Madge, i'm coming back to you um i would say first of all is the very short clips um technology wise or technology wise uh just the fact that you can access it on, on phones and everything, isn't it? No, I, okay, I, would, yes. I would say also, in addition to that, I think from what I've heard in the past is that the way, you know, things that you like, constantly you get bombarded with things that you want, you kind of engage in one type of content, it yeah. throws that type of content at you constantly. Exactly. AI, yeah? Mm. AI, AI yeah, yeah. which is doing exactly what you're exactly saying. Exactly that um rash so that's the thing uh, a parent came and we discussed i said look your, your child's on social media but you don't know about social media you don't know how instagram works like what's wrong with you yeah why would you send your child to for example you send the child into a shop but you don't know what that shop's about uh, shop's mm. about mm. you send them into an environment but you don't know as a parent you make sure you know everything about the school before ch- sending the child to the school. Mm-hmm. So you know about the doctor before sending him to the doctor. Why is it when it comes to technology, we're so lazy? And then you know what? Oh, it's, it's, a manai, yeah. oh, it's the time that we're living in. <laughs> oh, you know what? It's, it's technology, man. Oh, you know, back in the days. No, no, back in the days. The thing is, back in the days, the same problems were there. But we had, we had other issues. Yeah. Now we have technology, yeah, phone. I'm telling you. They're saying the phones will be obsolete in about 15 years' time. They'll become more digital. And VR, virtual reality. We're virtual talking reality, about pornography, yeah. you know, watching pornography where you've got the screen there and your hair. Mm. Imagine when you put on virtual reality and you're interacting with, with, with the pornography. That's so, another level of that'll be, next, that'll be next scale, bro. That's what I'm next saying. Scale. And that's why it's important. You know, Rash, you made this point. You said it's this whole distraction thing. Why? Because when a, a father comes home at the end of uh, at the end of the day, rather than engaging with the wife, rather than engaging with the children, he sits and switches on Netflix, and everyone sits around the telly. So, in essence, what he's trying to teach the kids is just uh, ignoring. Uh, what the, there's a there's a nice word. Uh, I guess I've used deflection before. I, uh, while while I remember that word, it's it's deflection. Yeah. It's not necessarily tackling the thing; mm. it's numbing the pain. Yeah, yeah? by by television or um, by by movies and stuff. I think she, uh, Rash said escapism. Maybe that, I don't know if, if that's what. Yeah, 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 yeah. E- exactly. Yeah, yeah. Escapism mm-hmm. is very is pretty much the theme of these things, and that can then uh, lead, that goes to social media. You're unhappy. People aren't praising your father. Doesn't tell his own daughter, mashallah, you're looking very beautiful. Oh, mashallah, you've done this and that. So now she seeks that validation from other people. Subhanallah, you see, bro. sometimes we even think we're doing good and then we're doing what exactly what you described. So I'll give you an example. Like if you think you're on the dawah scene and stuff and you've been out and you've been out giving dawah in the mosque, in the universities and stuff, you come home and maybe you're still engaging in a discussion on social media and it, on something very, very important, something Islamic. But what you do is you walk through the door and the first thing you do is you go, you get out your phone. You get your phone out and what you're doing and you, you shout at your children and go, okay, I'm just, I'm giving dawah. I'm not on YouTube messing about or I'm not watching, so, you know, uh, some entertainment. I'm actually doing dawah with someone. I know I've done this before. So I'll be my own worst critic. I'll have come home. Maybe someone messaged on a post on Facebook or something and I'll be responding to that. I'll be thinking, wait, I'm doing something good. I'm giving dawah to someone or I'm, you know, correcting someone. But actually what I've equally done is cast aside my children and gone, no, I'm doing something important. And I think this lockdown just very quickly has even made me reflect a little bit that I can now see that the time they yearned from me is is just this reality has shown that up a little bit. 
And I, I think that's important. And we do it without realizing. We do it thinking that actually we're doing something good. But okay, fine, you get, you'll be rewarded for that. You're doing a good action. But are we neglecting other things that we should be doing at the same time? Yeah, yeah 100%. And this, and this develops over time, that escapism. Then people will go to drugs for escapism, alcohol for escapism. Yeah. Then they will go to, you know, going out with friends. So again... Yeah. You've got to move up, isn't it? You've got to move to the next level. Yeah, even if it's sugar, yeah? Some people go for food, yeah? That's the escapism. So again, yeah, like you're saying, bro, it is, it then escalates. It escalates, but where did it start from? It starts from the home, the father, when he comes yeah. home. The people may not be able to relate with that whole dawah thing, but um, they might be able to relate just with the, the fact that the parents are busy. The father's constantly at work trying to yeah. put food on the table, which like for you, uh, for what Rash was saying, it, it was dawah. But for the fathers, it's I'm putting food on the table. Yeah, yeah, I'm earning. I need to talk to my business contacts. Mm. Otherwise, this house and this lifestyle, the hell with your house, the hell with your lifestyle. It's Live in a right. smaller house. Live with more simpler things. Mm. Give your kids time. They don't care about all that stuff. A kid wants time. First 10 years, the kid wants your time. Beautiful, and they yeah. say the brain waves, in the mind of a child is in theta. Yeah, it's in, uh, it's in alpha. Um, but thereafter, after the age of 11, it's more difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We see that. First 10 years, the child is more impressionable. Yeah, the brain waves of a child, theta, delta, it's more impressionable. That's the state that even therapists and hypnotists try to get you into. <clears throat> after that, you can try say, oh, how do we get the youth to blah, blah, blah. Why do you think I'm a primary school teacher? I've been offered the post of a secondary school teacher <clears throat> because before when I would hear this stuff, the, when I, even if I'm going to a different country, speaking to different types of people, it, was, it would always be youth, kids. Mm. You need to get the kids to give them the tarbiyah. And that's important. The first 10 years tarbiyah is very important. very important. A child will learn how to handle, how to deal with things. Very Subhan. important. Very important. They say yeah. after the age of 25, there's only two things that can really change you. Yeah, number one is trauma. Mm. Yeah, traumatic death of somebody and whatnot. And it can just give you a paradigm shift. Shock or number two, mm. it's regular enforcement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's where the Nazis used Gorbelian propaganda, which is repeating a lie till people started believing it to be true. And we see that now with terrorism and extremism, repeating that so many times that it starts getting lodged into our subconscious. And of course, uh, that's why in self-help books they say constant repetition mm. i can do this yeah I, i'm strong i'm brave it sounds very cheesy very kind of like cliche like really speaking to myself that's a bit loserish but sorry bro but even from an islamic point of view we know that is correct in that you know doing a regular action even if it's a small action repetitively as the prophet sallam tells us is that you know it builds up habit it makes you you know in you get routine you become more productive and you know the the more small actions you can do they lead to bigger actions so we know these things are proven yet sometimes like you say because we're so busy sometimes or we we tell ourselves we're so busy we we neglect things and um and i think one thing that leads me to think about is okay we can use social media we can use all of these platforms to better get a message out but are we failing as kind of not failing, but we need to do more, you know, our mosques and stuff, you know, I know it's slightly off a tangent a little bit, but you know, like we're trying to use these type of platforms to get certain ideas out. Surely mosques and things should be highlighting to children, you know, undoing some of the work that these schools are doing honest, and things. I think, I think some mosques do. Yeah, they are definitely. Just, yeah. Uh, 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 because I've seen quite a few do have these things, but nobody turns up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's a negative association with babies, yeah. mm-hmm. with with mosques, yeah, and it's this kind of nine eleven propaganda that we've been fed. Oh, you need to be dubious uh, of of the mosque. You might be radicalized. You might be this. Mm-hmm. You might be that. So uh, again, it's that thing. That's why you've got certain people that are doing like retreats, yeah, going hiking or doing these events, which I think is a is a clever way of of just doing what you do in a mosque. How, and plus, there's more freedom when you're maybe hiring a youth center or something. Because in a mosque, you can't do certain things. You've got uncles, if you're doing wrestling, you've got uncles saying, oh, this is there to be of the mosque and there's this and there's that. So I would say things are being done, but again, it comes down to how things are being packaged. But on the other hand, bro, I do think you're right. Like with 
imams that can't even speak English. Like I still get brothers telling me, especially up north, imams can't speak English. And the, you're right, there, there aren't events happening, even speeches, at least flipping get one a week sort of thing. Yeah, have, have some sort of events going on. But I'll again, tell one, I'll tell you one thing that's woken some people up a little bit. I don't know what you think about this, Dishan. Um, one thing that's woken people up is all this kind of teaching of LGBTQ and stuff. Obviously, you being a teacher and stuff, maybe you're a bit more insightful on this than we are. But a lot of the, the Muslim parents have somewhat woken up to this fact that, wait there a minute, we do need to do more. We do need to undo some of these things because there was a time where you could send your children to school quite innocently knowing that, okay, what they're learning maths, English, science but okay we know that there's issues with about what sciences they might be learning but now they're also being fed this kind of gender fluidity lgbtq and stuff and stuff surely now parents as well as mosques need to actively do something to to overcome this the thing is bro our parents came from abroad yeah they came from abroad they didn't know that first of all the challenges that were in this country yeah That's no, no. People say they've, they've come for the pound They've, they've come for the currency, but they've lost their gems and jewels. And the gems and jewels being culture and religion. Subhanallah. Their children's um, apostating or whatnot. So they came. And the main thing was, especially back in the days, a lot of people make memes and jokes out of this. That, oh, parents, Desi parents want you to be a doctor or a lawyer or this and that. But the thing is, especially amongst Pakistanis, this, this stereotype doesn't exist anymore. Mm. We're very illiterate people. Yeah, Indians. Uh, Sri Lankans have really taken the the lead in this now. They're becoming doctors and lawyers. Way too be busy making these small little jokes on TikTok and putting the youth off these professions, whilst you've got other nations that are, you know, taking this forward. So uh, back in the days when our parents did come, it was like parai, yeah, education, parai. education, education. That's very important. However, you have to understand where the education is coming from. Like people don't know that even in University of Oxford, oh, my son has gone to Oxford. In Oxford, the biggest professor of biology was Dawkins, who's a hardcore mm. neo-atheist. Yeah. Mm. Leader of the neo-atheist movement. Professor of uh, chemistry, Professor Atkins. He's a hardcore atheist as well. Yep. Yeah. In, in Cambridge, the physics professor, Dork, um, you know the guy in the... Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking. He was an uh, avid uh, atheist as well. So... Our parents, you can't necessarily blame them, no. but having this naive view that you just send your child into a thing because it's good or whatnot, it's, it's actually done more harm than um, benefit, I think, in, in those regards. And our parents have not um, taken an active role in education and now and in, in, in our society, um, just been you know, amassing wealth. And when you speak to some people about Dawah, they say, no, we've come to this country for this and we're going back and making these court keys back home and this and that. And now suddenly this LGBT thing, I'm, I'm going to be real with you guys. It's too late. Okay. It's too late. Yeah. You did the, the one school or the one city that did stand up Birmingham, even the far right, Tommy Robinson, there's a clip. Is, is yeah. I've seen that clip. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's saying that we should stand with them and blah, blah, blah. But you know, when the far right says that, you know, you know it's too late. Yeah, it's too late. And the, um, the, the, the way the Muslims are being victimized and their views are being misrepresented, you can't. You, you know what I'm saying? So, and that's why with this, um, the lynching of and, and the death of uh, Ahmed Aubrey or Aubrey Ahmed. Yeah. Oh, in America. In America. Yeah, that was mad. Uh, and even here in the UK on the, in the petrol station where the uh, black guy got tased as well. The, the thing is, a lot of times, um, sometimes our people have this mentality. Oh, that, oh th th they're black. Oh, oh they're, in, they're, they're yeah. Bengali. Oh, they are, are Rohingya. Oh, they are oh, Chinese Uyghurs. Yeah. But until it happens, like people are saying, oh, why aren't people standing up for the Kashmir cause? But when you ask the very same prime minister of Pakistan, when he was asked about Uyghurs, he said, I don't know. I don't know much about that. I, I don't know. He's an in, in an interview. Yeah, yeah I've seen that. I, I don't know much about that. Are you taking the mic? Are you taking the mic? Like you want people to support your Kashmir issue, but you can't support the Chinese. And it's this whole thing that 
you know, we, we wait till things come at our, at our front door, but there's no one left to save us. Mm. So as Muslims, we should be taking an active stance against, um, against zulm, oppression, anywhere. Yeah, be no doubt. Blacks, be it against, I would say, if, if for example, somebody is being oppressed, regardless of what orientation or what the homosexuals or whatever you are, you should not be oppressed and harmed. Yes, we may have a difference of opinion with you. And yes, I may not want to adopt certain things in my lifestyle or whatnot. Mm. But no, oppression as Muslims, whether it's the Rohingya cause, Uyghur cause, whether it's what's going on in Venezuela, what, mm. we need to be aware of these things and not just wait for us because it's that whole example that they have about the red, red cow, green cow and blue cow. When the, the, when the wolf wants to devour them, there's three mm. of them. So mm. he thinks, you know what, mm. it's very difficult. So he goes to the red one and says, you know what, I don't have any beef with you. No pun intended. And he goes to the <laughs> green one, I've got no problem with you. And then he attacks the third one and the first two don't do anything. Yeah, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Then there's two left. Then he goes to one of them and says, look, I've got no problem with you. He attacks the second one. And then as soon as he's finished attacking that second one, he looks at the first one and the first one says, I died. I died the moment. I allowed you to attack the first cow. First one. And that's that's the case with us. Yeah. And that's the case. And it's it's a sad reality, but we should be taking these things on board. And not just now with the LGBT. I'm telling you it's too late. But we can still learn from other mm. things that are going to come and we prevent that or delay it as much as we can mm. by being a bit more proactive. Yeah, I mean the th- the thing is obviously uh this might lead on to a, a, another discussion altogether. Uh, but you know, in regards to the LBGT and uh, LGBT, shall I say, and, and I think Brother Zishan made a fantastic point as well that, you know, all these years that before the LGBT and this stuff, gender fluidity, the fact that, you know, parents are sending their children to school where they were teaching them atheism and, and, and all, this, all this sort of stuff, and, and that wasn't so much of an issue. But one thing I would say, Brother Zishan, is that, you know, you're saying it's too late. Fair enough, but, you know, in reality, would you not say, though, that, look, the point is this is a... Uh, a capitalist nation, uh, the the aqidah is secularism, and actually, what's happening today is just the fruits of their ideology anyway. And and this is something which is inevitable, whether Muslims are living here or whether they're not. You know, and just I th- add a little caveat there. Um, just just when I'm saying it's it's too late, I'm looking at objectively, yeah, from 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 the whole kind of thing where people think, will it be? Um, can it be reversed? I, I don't think it Oh, yeah, be. yeah, as in the laws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but when it comes to delaying it and people that are, mashallah, there, you know, speaking out against and, and voicing their, their concerns and delaying and staging protests, I think that's brilliant. Yeah, I'm not saying that it's, it, you know, these people shouldn't be doing it and it's too late, blah, blah, blah. What I'm saying is, if, if I was to look at an aerial kind of point that we it, it, things have been allowed to grow for so long, Yes, we can, but ultimately, I kind of see it like, um, personally, if people don't want their children to be privy to that sort of knowledge, it's going to have to be um, homeschooling sort of thing. But sorry, bro, you were saying? No, no. So, I mean, what, what I was saying, because I know, I know quite a few people who are um, like, uh, you know, English people, people I work with, you know, good people. And, and if you ask people uh, individually, what they will say is that they, would, they disagree with this. Okay, individually speak to people. But the reality is, is that, you know, with public opinion in society, public opinion is based on their freedoms and so on. And the way it's made out is the fact that, you know, even though you may be, you know, personally against homosexuality, for example, you know, you wouldn't dare say anything outside in public mm-hmm. because you'd be seen as a homophobic, etc. So the yeah. point I'm saying is that whether people, I mean, I'm not even, not even just Muslims, so whether the, the non-Muslims, normal people, whether they agree with it or not. But the point is, from a system point of view, okay, from an ideology point of view, because there's no boundaries, because it's always, it's go, always going to go to the next level, that yeah. these, things are, these things are inevitable. You know, someone trying to say, I don't think we can, I don't think it's, I think it would be very difficult for Muslims to say that we need to create our safe zone within this society. You know, I think the way, the way, things are advancing at such a rapid speed. It's not, you know, before we used to, and, and there was, or there's been discussions about multicultural, multiculturalism has failed because from what they're yeah. saying is that before it was wrong that we said, 
these people come over and they can live in their own areas and have their own ideas. Now what they're doing is they are pushing a, a common value of what it means to be British, promoting the freedoms, the values, etc. So the point, the, the point I'm making is that I don't think that as Muslims or even non-Muslims who disagree with this, that you could, you could change this because this is the fruits of the system itself. And as Muslims, you know, the reality is obviously it's not here in the UK, but as Muslims, we also require a, a society where Muslims can live, where the rules are in accordance with our beliefs as well. But until we don't, until we don't have that or we're not living in that environment, I think, you know, in this society, the, the best way to tackle this really uh, is to prepare yourself, pre to prepare your kids for what's coming. And this comes through seeking knowledge. And if people are, like you said before, you know, the, the father is doing 13, 14 hours shifts because, you know, he wants to build a house for his great grandchildren, right? He's looking so far ahead. You know, who's to blame? Is it the system? Is it the schools? Or is it, like you said, is it our own effort? And I think if we don't look inwards and don't try to put our own house in order, I think all we do is we point the, we, we point the finger at other people and, and play the blame game. But the reality is, I think this is the wrong approach. In madrasa starts at home, isn't it? And yeah, exactly. The, yeah, and, and, and that's the reality. Like, we, all it takes is, is, is a few people, like 313 were able to defeat an army of a thousand. Mm. Yeah, it was, a, it was an army that had angels and stuff. Why? Because the people were motivated. Subhanallah. Yeah, they, they had unadulterated faith. And, and, and I'm telling you, yeah, as, as a simple individual, I'm not that well off, I'm not that knowledgeable. A, a few basic equipment and you know just alhamdulillah because i've got a, a, a job a steady job because of that alhamdulillah i treat this the, the video kind of thing as, as 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 a passion so alhamdulillah whatever you see i don't have a team behind me i, I do the stuff myself now the reason why i say that is that we, we are underestimating the power each individual can take who who is well kind of balanced and well-rounded and again that comes like we discussed from the home. Yeah. If the first 10 years have been invested in from the parents, come call, eat less, eat less, Support. live in less and have a basic lifestyle. Today we, we have a sky membership. We've got a Netflix membership. We've got Wi-Fi, 30, 40 pound Wi-Fi. We've got, um, you know, magazines coming in. We've got this channel uh, extra that we're, we're, we're paying for. We've got this mobile contract and we've got this guy. Well, I already mentioned Sky Virgin, whatever, all these channels or whatnot. The thing is because our expenditure is so high, that's why we find it very difficult. Live simply, live frugally. Yeah. Now the only way you do that is if before reproducing, yeah, you, you prepare yourself. And that's why people are so intent on getting married and honestly, I feel like the wrong people are having kids, yeah, because they have the kids, they don't know, yeah, they, they cock it up, and then now suddenly the society has to pay for it, yeah. So if people understand the, the whole kind of processing idea before having kids, like, it's, it's this whole lockdown mentality that you have time to reflect and you read. Now, those people that might be watching, they might be like, oh, I can't read and blah, 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 look. I'll give you something practical. There is an app. It's called Blinkist. Yeah, it summarizes entire books into 15 minutes. If you don't like reading, you can just press the play button, and she will read the book for you, the summary of the book. If 15 minutes is too long, it times it by 1.5. It, it it shortens it, and she says it very quickly. You can highlight or whatnot. I'm telling you, like I can't read entire books. Just read book summaries. Broaden your knowledge. Yeah. Go, go to the mosque, you know, interact with shuyukh and scholars and sit with people of knowledge, broaden your, your, your understanding and, and, and look for alternative sorts of, of, of media. And then when you have a kid, it's more likely that now because you've prepared the land, it's more likely that that seed will flourish better. So the land is filled with all sorts of stuff and nonsense and the seed comes out crooked and, you know, unnourished and like, you know what I'm saying? Like, do, do you blame the seed or do you blame the soil? Yeah. So I know certain people will be like, oh, this, I'm not denying that there are outside forces, but ultimately it's the force that's inside the home. That's the most important force 
And that's what we see with Imam Malik, rahimahullah, Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah, their parents, uh, Imam Shafi, rahimahullah, their, their parents played an integral part in their upbringing. Yeah, they, they sent their children to learn adab, to learn manners, yeah, to sit at the feet of scholars and benefit from them. Today, are we doing that? Or like, okay, there are certain people that will give your children wrong education of the religion. All right, there are certain doctors that will try to kill you. Yeah, there's certain bus drivers that, that, that are drunk and under that. What do you do? You do what's in your um, power to yeah. vet these people. It doesn't mean that you cut off religion totally. It's like cutting off. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a rose that's attached to its roots has more chance of survival and, and flourishing rather than a, a rose that's been cut off from the root. So eventually it will wilt, die and decompose. Yeah, so that's how it is. We need to stay to the root, and that is knowledge. That is the direction that comes from Allah and His Prophet. Just Subhan a quick Allah. point from me. You know what? I think this is where I think we need to support each other quite a bit more. I think maybe we don't do this now. Is that, for instance, what maybe get, get as I've got older, one thing I've appreciated is that not everybody's going to be on that same movement that you're on. So as Brother Majid was just saying there is that, okay, so maybe here at Voice of the Ummah, what we're doing is trying to promote that kind of holistic view of Islam. But, you know, like Maj said, is that we're not really going to be able to, you know, certainly in the longer term, create a safe zone for ourselves in these societies. If there are those people who are calling towards, you know, uniting Muslims under, you know, a single land, uniting Muslims so that the Sharia is implemented, because those that nurturing of that soil example that you gave just there, Zishan, very important. That whole idea, though, that re the soil can only be fruitful in the way that we want it when Allah Sharia is implemented. So. I, what I've woken up to maybe in over the years is that we need people like yourselves who are going to wake up those people who are being distracted by this society so that they gradually, gradually come more towards going, you know what, I need to focus more on my deen. But then I think also like people like yourselves, people who have influence need to then push those people towards thinking, now you do need to think more about how do we create that true vision of Islam? You know, move towards that. Sometimes what happens, we do our own thing, but we don't. I, we don't the reason why I disagree together. with that, bro, is again, it's it's that whole um, one person's responsibility sort of thing. Hmm. It's like certain people are good for certain fields. Hmm. Yeah, you wouldn't tell Abu Huraira radiallahu an, who's a master of hadith, that okay, you now need to start getting people to fear and this and that. No, you got Abdullah ibn Masood for that. Yeah, well, at least you push them towards that direction, maybe. But, but that's the thing, whether you push them or not, bro, uh, yeah, that, that encouragement needs to be there. And that's, that's what you do when, you, when you're working with each other, isn't it? Mm, definitely. Yeah? Like, for example, me coming on, on the podcast, I, I wouldn't be doing a video that's one and a half, two hours long anyway. No. You know what I'm saying? But just coming and showing that, look, this, this, this is, you know, the discussions that we can have. And this is a, but, but that's the thing, though. Again, it's, it's um, not, it's, putting the responsibility on somebody else oh it's that person's job because he's he's an influencer or he's this or he's that my thing is bro let people do what they're doing mm. and encourage that yeah i think everybody has something to to bring to the table and uh, i think if if people rather than saying oh this person needs to do this that person needs to do that uh, there's there's of course more that we can do but mm. it's important rather than kind of um yeah just leaving it to other people i think we've gone well beyond that stage like that used to happen back in the days when it used to be a monopoly with certain people like only certain people were maybe on on mainstream or that, that had a column in a newspaper nowadays with social media yeah. where instagram facebook youtube podcasting like everyone's got a hd camera everyone's got good sound like you guys were praising the sound that's just from the phone you know what i'm saying that's mad like, you know Still, I, I'm so surprised. Quite bassy. Unless your voice is like that. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Uh, probably that fast, isn't it? But um, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what it comes down to, I think. Um, I think everybody can bring something to the table. And when we start kind of saying, oh, that person, this person, then I think that's where we kind of encourage this notion of, yep, so-and-so needs to do more or so-and-so needs to do this. But when we kind of... It, build that muscle that you know what 
we we could do more i could do more uh, this, yeah. this, this can be done more um i think i think that's more of a healthier way to look at it you know like i, I want to just add some quickly um was you know you mentioned the example about uh, the mother uh, battle of Badr, yeah. and uh you know what we see is that uh, from the battle of Badr is that you know the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the sahaba they first put in the practical steps they first performed those practical steps then they raised their hands to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know asked them for victory and, and and so on so what we see is you know um like you're saying if we don't put in those steps and and, and not just half-hearted things at the end of the day you know when you're doing something for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then you really you well and truly it should be you know from the from the best you have from you know and should be the best in the best allah will do the rest sort of thing isn't it yeah yeah exactly yeah. so um you know i think uh what's important is that we need to put in the the effort and inshallah the rest you know uh, we leave in the hands of allah but at the same time you're not not in a very fatalistic point of view you know you you need to have checks and and and, and measures and, and milestones that you need to try to try to achieve otherwise mm-hmm. Like you said, I think you're just kidding yourself. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Do your best. Allah will do the rest. And yeah, be be practical, be realistic. And uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. So inshallah, I think this podcast has, has been going on for a little while. And the thing is, though, you know, it's strange because there's so many questions that I'd already lined up to ask Brother Zishan. But the thing is, is we could probably speak for ages. And and certainly, you know, it's a proper himmat from Brother Zishan because, you know, normally his videos are max 10 minutes, I think. <laughs> but he's, he's been able to stick with us for so long, you know. Uh, but yeah, bro, so, you know, in regards to your future projects. Uh, the plan is just to... The plan is not to have a plan. Okay, Mashallah. subhanAllah. Subhanallah, subhanAllah. Because I think it ties in with, with what we discussed, that it's... Um, as, as things are unfolding, mm-hmm. as the demands of people are changing, that's what we address and that's what we discuss. And it's important that whatever happens in our life, we discuss that as well. Because if we're going through it, it it's more likely that it will come from the heart. It will be more genuine and people will be able to relate to it more. However, if it's fake and you're distant from it, it's not the same. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, just, just seeing how, what, what comes our way. I mean, no one could have predicted last Ramadan that this Ramadan we'd be in, in the COVID crisis. My, no one predicted last year that, that we'd start off the year with World War Three impending. No mm. one predicted that there would be deaths of um, of uh, certain celebrities or whatnot. So we don't know. We don't know. And you know what? It's it's the whole mystery of it that I think makes it more more interesting and enthralling because I think we may plan something, but what Allah has in store, I think, is much more in- exciting and enthralling. And just the mystery of it just adds to it, I think. SubhanAllah. That's, I like uh, that answer a lot. <laughs> nicely summed up, bro. Nicely summed up. Rash, any, any final comments from yourself? No, not really. No, I benefit a lot from the session. As parents and things like that, you know, we do need to really open our eyes to the fact that we need to give more time to our children and we need to be aware of the technologies. And like you mentioned, AI and stuff like that, that's going to really take a grasp of our lives over the coming years. Um, And just because we might think we don't understand it, that doesn't mean we shouldn't go out of our way to try and understand it and try and see how it's going to affect our lives and our deen. So no, no, lots of good advice and Jazakallah. I'm sure our audience will benefit from from your from the points that you made. Inshallah. Yeah, yeah, inshallah. Before this disconnects again, uh, the only point I would say really is at first, you know, because when I watch Brother Zishan on Smile to Jannah, I, I find him very, I find him hilarious actually. And I was thinking, I was thinking, you know, Subhanallah, am I going to be able to like, uh, you know, stop laughing throughout this podcast? But it's be quite, it's be quite serious. It's be quite, you know, I mean, it's a really good advice. You know why? It's, it's because um, any any time things like this happen uh, for the channel. Like when a bit of news happens or something happens, I have to now take that and I have to package it with comedy and mm. put it to the audience. However, in podcasts, it's different. You, you don't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? Because each podcast has its own audience. So I feel I can just talk about issues How without good. that kind of addition of that PR sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I think it's nice. And plus the issues that you bring up, um, I think because they're quite 
integral and important if you kind of start just busting out jokes about <laughs> LGBT and channel will get shut down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, no I'm I'm saying from our audience members. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so bro, uh, Jazakallah Hair, really, it was a pleasure to have you on. Uh, get you know get get to know you a bit more as well. Inshallah, hopefully you know like uh, you know we can continue collaborating and stuff like that. And you know, uh, I definitely watch your stuff, and I you know the I think you know keep it up, bro. You know, there's there's a market there that Subhanallah needs your message, and maybe other people may follow suit as well. Um, so yeah, so on that note, Jazakallah uh, to you both, and Jazakallah for all our audience back home. Uh, if you're watching or listening, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And our podcast, uh, pl- well, we're available on all pod- popular podcast platforms as well. And we're on uh, Instagram and all sorts. So, inshallah, ta'ala, on that note, jazakallah khair, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. All right, guys, until next time, assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Thanks for watching that video. For more exclusive videos, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget you can listen to some of our shows wherever you are because we're also available on all popular podcast platforms. And for more Voice of the Ummah content, make sure you check out the links to all of our social media platforms in the description below.